Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another tutorial on Access Studios. And in today's tutorial, we are going to be creating this cool effect right here, this cool uh, cartoonish looking fun 3D, fake 3D extrusion text or logo reveal thing. And here's another example which we are going to create today. But before we're going to get right into this tutorial, I wanted to show you my buddy's channel, Mobox Graphics, really quick, who does amazing and very helpful and really professional and compact tutorials. I can guarantee you will learn a lot by subscribing and watching his videos. So be sure to check him out, should be the first link in the description. Talked enough now, let's get right into this tutorial now. So, as in all of our tutorials, we are going to be creating a new composition with Control N. I'll just keep these properties um, and just make a new solid as a background. And I am going to use the same color as I used for this. And yeah, next thing I am going to do is just uh, some random text. Uh, fun, what about fun? Because uh, this kind of looks fun. Uh, I'm using AG Book Rounded, if you're asking by the way, because I think these rounded fonts um, fit this style really good. So yeah, um, now that we have this text, yeah, I'm going to center it. Okay, cool. And um, the next thing uh, is I'm going to right click this and create shapes from text. So now we have uh, three different layers, each layer for another letter. And um, now I'm going to duplicate this layer um, because one layer is going to be this extrusion and one layer is going to be the white text itself. So one layer, I'm going to change the color to a pretty bright gray. And I'm actually also going to add a stroke so that we have an even thicker text. So I'm going to click the fill, copy this code here, click OK and paste it in the stroke and make it, I don't know, five. Yeah, seems good. And same procedure procedure uh, for this one. Make it, maybe make it only four and this one six. So we don't have, um, a weird outline because of this dark gray um, at our white text. Um, and now I want to parent our extrusion to our white text. So I'm going to select this pick whip and pick whip the fun outlines too. Now we can see if I move this, everything's going to move with it. The next thing I'm going to do, which is actually why I needed to right click and uh, create shapes for mask is in order to add a repeater effect down here, we can type whatever number we want in there. I'll just set this to 30 for now. And then if you set both of these to one pixel, this is going to be a seamless fake extrusion. Um, but I kind of don't really like this basic 45 degree angle um, extrusion. So that's why I'm going to change this to 0.7. So what this is going to do, it's uh, going to um, reposition every copy by plus 0.7 um, pixels in the X axis and one pixel for the Y axis. That's why we get this cool extrusion effect. And if I set this up to 100, the extrusion is just going to get bigger, like 100 pixels X direction and uh, 70 pixels X direction, sorry, 100 Y direction, 70 X direction. Okay, cool. Now we are going to animate this whole thing and also going to rotate this thing a little bit as we can see here in 3d space so um, I'm going to just click both of those and uh, then I'm going to make some key uh, keyframes so first keyframe at uh, 
for x and y rotation zero and then i go down on the timeline by one second i don't know and set this to let's see yeah maybe minus 30 and this one should be around 15 i think yeah that should be cool and then let's change this copies thing to zero and add a keyframe go to one second and set this to i don't know 60 and we also want this kind of bounce bounce back effect this overshoot as you can see um if i replay this swoop, and it bounces back so that's why i'm going to go down on the timeline even more by 20 frames and set this back to minus 25 and 10. So also the rotation will bounce back. Next thing is going to be the copies, which I'm going to set to 35. Looks pretty cool. Um, you can of course change this to even, oh shit, shouldn't have done this, 328. Now we have a long shadow effect, we don't want this. Control Z or Control C however you want to spell it. Just do as if you wouldn't have heard the version of Z or C you don't like. Anyway, now we can replay this and see, it kind of looks awkward. It kind of looks like it's creating a shadow rather than extruding. That's because uh, our text itself isn't moving, but only the extrusion is going down in X and Y axis. So we have to counter animate this whole thing by animating our position uh, just press control no option p and you're going to create an automatic keyframe and then we have to um, remember where the bottom of the u is go down by one second and then we need to drag this up on the x-axis so that the bottom of our extrusion is exactly where the u was before also of course a little bit in the x direction so that this line is parallel to these extrusion lines and then also for the last keyframe it should be a little bit like this maybe okay let's see if this looks better now yeah that's cool uh, don't worry if it looks weird by now it's it's going to look a lot better if we add easing and um, also offset or each of those characters so now just click anywhere in this gray area to unselect all layers and double press U whoops nope XLD press U one time and then press it again so we get all the keyframes select all of those press F9 go into the graph editor and make sure you're in the speed graph and then we want to make some cool cool um, easing uh, so how do we want this easing to look like we want like a bouncy flop and then it should have some hang time and bounce back so i'm going to set the influence to 40 percent for the whoops first part and then to i don't know 60 percent and again 60 percent and here for the last one we can set this to 70 i don't know let's see yeah i think this looks quite fun i mean we could make it a lot smoother if we drag those down um Okay, still a bit harsh, I think. Okay. Okay, I think that looks, that really fits the style we want to get. So now comes the fun part. Uh, now we're going to offset each one of those letters. And this we are going to do by duplicating each of those two layers two times and then 
deleting two of those shapes of those letters every time. So I'm going to delete U and N for this one. Then I'm going to delete F and N for this one. Then I'm going to delete F and U for this one. So that we have F, U, N, fun. And then let's see. Okay, cool. Nothing uh, buggy happened. Uh, and then same for this one. Uh, UN, F and N, F and U. Cool. Now let's see. Okay, awesome. Now we need to um, reparent all of those because every letter should be parent to parented to its uh, parent letter, right? Um, um, and right now our U, for example, is parented to our F. So we need to change this one to, I think, five. Yep. And this one to uh, outline six. Okay. And now as we got that, we can offset these layers by a little bit each. And we can do that by wait, F, U, N, I think. So we need to drag this U and this U down on the timeline a little bit. And then this N and this N. And then select all of those and press option bracket so that the layer will start at this time. And now we can see something happened there. It's kind of looking weird because we have these flickering effects and all. And that's why I said tricky part. Because now we are going to do some matting and all that shit we don't want to do. So here, for example, we can see really good it overlaps, this uh, extrusion overlaps with our U here. And this is just because all these layers are at the exact same set position. Um, and yeah, now we need to change that. We can select both of our Fs, go to uh, click P and set our Z position to a few pixels more, like six, I think should be fine. And then for both of our U's, let's set these to, oops, four and four. And now we can see the overlapping, um, <coughs> the overlapping, <coughs> the overlapping paths have uh, the overlapping, the overlapping um, places, the overlapping parts have gone. So cool, now we have this fun little animation. And what I did with this animation here was this cool shiny reveal, which I'm going to show you really quick how to do. So I'm going to select all of these layers we just worked with and right click pre-compose and um, click OK. And now, uh, with this pre-composition, we can do a lot of shit. We can, for example, duplicate it. And one of those, we can add brightness to it. Right, whoops. Shit, what did I do? Control Z, color correction, brightness. Okay, go to effect, uh, color correction, and add brightness and contrast. And set this up all the way to yeah, 150 and then even duplicate it and set the uh, other one to 100. Okay, cool. And now you probably know, oh shit, I kind of only, what, how did I delete this? Um, well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to duplicate this composition again and delete these effects for the other composition. Okay, and now we can see we have these this one above the other one. And now we can play with some masking. So for example, you could add a shine effect to this whole thing by making this cool mask and animating it by going down to mask path and making this 
dragging this above the whole text. Cool. And then let's add some easing. Okay. Now we have this cool shine effect. And of course, if you want to do the same as I did here with the whole text appearing like that, you could um, drag, uh, you could add a mask for our main pre-composition here. Um, I'm going to make some square, press control T and rotate it. Okay, cool. And then we can animate the mask path again and go down on the timeline so that we can see all of our text. Cool. Um, and then there's this cool, cool free tool. I think it's free. You could also pay if you want to, like donate a few dollars, which I would find really nice if you do if you did that. Um, this script is called Ease Copy. Uh, you could copy. Um, you could select those two frames and click copy, and then paste the ease on this one. And now we have this cool thing. Now, of course, we could also change these up. Now we have both of these effects. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And of course, you could do this with anything, with any logo or whatever you want to. And um, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and you had much fun watching it. Be sure to subscribe to see more tutorials, give a like, uh, so that I know that you like these kind of tutorials and I can do more. And of course, don't forget to have a look at Mobox Tutorials YouTube channel. Bye.